Hey everybody, I'm Alexis, and today I'm doing a video on the cognitive functions explained. So let's get into it. So I first want to start off by, you may be familiar with Myers-Briggs, and this is going to be a little bit different. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the origins of Myers-Briggs, so that would be Carl Jung's um, work from the 1920s, and kind of showing you where Myers-Briggs stems from. First off, in the 20s, Carl Jung realized that we have ways to take in information, basically um, the way we learn and kind of what information we're attuned to. And then we also have ways to make decisions, and that's kind of where our should statements come from. What should we do? What's the best course of action? And it's kind of how you t determine the actions you take. So everyone has a way to take in information and everyone has a way to make decisions. So let's get into that. So basically he realized that you could take in information through your senses or through intuitions. And those two words are opposite. So when you think of your senses, you know, you're thinking your five senses. So you're predominantly oriented toward sight and sound um, and senses around you. Whereas intuitions is more um, tuned into the implications, the what if, what's going on. Um, and, the, and those are opposites of each other. So everyone's kind of oriented toward one of the two. Those are ways you can take in information. And then everyone has their own ways that they can make decisions. So some people oriented toward thoughts. So it's kind of impersonal metrics and personal metrics. So their focus may be on making decisions based on logic, money, time, people, factors like that. And then there are some people that are oriented toward making decisions based solely on feelings. So that could be like their inner feelings and what feels right to them. It could be um, how would this impact the group and their feelings. And they don't really take into account very much like impersonal metrics such as time and money. It's basically the human element is like what they're focused on. So once again, those are opposites. So for the purpose of this, we're saying like, Making decisions with your thoughts is the opposite of making decisions with your feelings. Um, and so what he realized was some people would have introverted ways and some people have extroverted ways of doing this. So some people are oriented toward their introverted senses, their inner senses. So um, ooh, what, what does the sound feel like to me? What was that memory like to me? And very focused on their own personal experience, very subjective, very in oriented toward memories. And then some people are oriented toward their extroverted sensings like, Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that sound. Ooh, how does this feel? And they're constantly oriented toward what's going on in their outer senses. So you'll notice there are ways that we abbreviate these. So there's introverted sensing, which is abbreviated SI. So the S is for sensing and the I is for introverted. And then we have extroverted sensing, which is abbreviated SE. Once again, the S is for sensing, but the E is for extroverted. So extroverted sensing. Uh, same, same with intuition. So intuition can be extroverted in nature or it can be introverted in nature. So you're focusing, it could be extroverted intuition, meaning focusing on the outer world what if wow what are the possibilities what could happen over there what could happen over there basically in the outer world what are the what ifs then there's introverted intuition so it's kind of like in my own mind what is happening and kind of what are the dots being connected in my own inner mind um same with thoughts the thoughts can be introverted or thoughts can be extroverted so if you're oriented toward your introverted your inner thoughts saying, does this make sense to me is this logical um sometimes these people can have a difficult time in school because they're not just gonna you know flat out accept other people's thoughts. You know, they have to really make sure it makes sense to them and things are logical and they don't necessarily just accept authority figures, you know, at face value just for any reason. Then there's extroverted thinkers. So that means they're focusing on the outer world's thoughts. So on the group's thoughts, how the group thinks about things and according to the group, how have things worked. And then lastly, we've got feelings. So you could be oriented toward the group's feelings and everyone around the extrovert feelings, or you could be oriented toward the introverted, your inner personal feelings. Okay, so basically when you put that all together, when you put together the sensing, intuition, thinking and feeling, and then when you also can combine them with all of their introverted and extroverted options, you come down to these eight cognitive functions. So there are four ways you can take in information. You got the introverted and extroverted sensing, and introverted and extro extroverted intuition. And you also have four ways to make decisions. So that would be introverted and extroverted thinking, and then introverted and extroverted feeling. And not everyone has all of these, but we'll get into in the next video how you know which ones you have. In this video, what I'm not going to do is explain how these eight cognitive functions show up in a little bit more precise descriptions of them. And one thing I want to mention as well before we get going is that these are also opposite. So I've kind of drawn lines where these are opposite. So introverted sensing is the opposite of extroverted intuition. And that's because introverted is the opposite of extroverted. And we already described that sensing is the opposite of intuition. So we kind of have these pairs that are in axes with each other and they are like yin and yang basically. So one's taking up one aspect, one's taking up the other. They're complete opposites of each other, but every person, if you have one part of it, 
you also have the other part of it and your personality. So that way it kind of balances you out because they're opposites. So the first axis that I'm gonna go over here is the introverted intuition with extroverted sensing axis. So if you're a person who has one of these you have both of them and they and they're opposites one's introverted one's extroverted and one's intuition and one is sensing so this is one of the ways where you can take an in information this is a information gathering axis so introverted intuition is focused on its inner intuitions whereas extroverted sensing is focused on its outer experiences and um, so on the one hand it's focusing on what if and how's my mind forming patterns in here and the other one is very involved in the moment. And it's, you know, kind of the opposite of just being stuck in its mind. It's very involved in the present moment. NI, that's all abbreviated. NI is about seeing the future, whereas SE is, you know, living in the moment. Um, NI is about the mind. SE is about the body. NI is about complex information. SE is about, like, simple truths. NI is about detaching from the moment to form those patterns. SE is about acting quickly, being immersed in the moment so you can gather all of the information that you can. Um, NI is tapped into implications, SE is tapped into senses. NI is looking for ways to conserve energy, and SE is looking for ways to expend energy. So you can already see how these are definitely opposites in a person, and this um, polarity is definitely like a mind-body difference. Um, and again, if you have one of these, you have both of them, so it is balanced out. So these are kind of ways that you can, um, you know, take in information and learn and kind of how your brain is working around. Uh, the second axis that has to do with taking in information is the NESI axis. So NE is extroverted intuition. It's all about um, what are the possibilities and probabilities in the outer world. And then SI is introverted sensing. So it's how have you taken in all the senses and then how do you process that in an introverted way? So NE is about creating the future. SI is about treasuring the past. NE is about experimentation. SI is about stability. NE is about the what ifs. SI likes reliable information. NE sees possibilities everywhere. SI sees memories everywhere. NE likes to get out of comfort zones. SI looks for safety and precedence. NE likes to brainstorm for new information. SI looks to experts and tradition for answers and information. And then NE is optimistic and SI is more realistic. So yes, yeah, so you can see how these are opposites. Once again, if you have one of these, you have the other um, because they're an axis, they go together. You can't have one without having the other. So, so far we've talked about the two axes for how you can take in information, the four functions. So now let's move on to the two axes for how you make decisions, how you think things should be, your opinions. Okay, so the next polarity about is about extroverted thinking, basically the group's thoughts and introverted feeling, your inner feelings. So TE is about group think, um, you know, what does the group think is best? What have they vetted and feel like is best? FI is about your inner feelings. Uh, TE is about metrics, numbers, time, any sort of metrics. FI is about morals. Uh, TE can be about status, whereas FI is about self. Uh, TE is about what works to accomplish goals. FI pursues what feels right to inner convictions. Uh, TE improves systems. FI uses art or expression to replicate inner emotions. TE organizes people and resources. FI understands nuance of human emotion. Uh, TE is driven by outcomes, not feelings, and FI is driven by personal feelings, not outcomes. Yeah, you can see how these are complete opposites. Um, and once again, if you have one, you have the other. So if you seem like, wow, it's really tilted on one side or the other, you have one, you've got the other. And finally, our very last um, decision-making axis, the way that you the way you think things should be. We have TI, which is introverted thinking, your inner thoughts, and we have FE, which is extroverted feeling. It's kind of the group's feelings. So TI is about your inner thoughts and FE is about the group's feelings. TI is about truth and FE is about, you know, love and loving the people around. Uh, TI is about data. FE is about diplomacy. TI is motivated by logical analysis. FE is motivated by interpersonal dynamics um, and they believe they impact the culture of the room. Uh, TI understands emotions get in the way of pure truth and FE understands unwritten social rules. Uh, TI roots out lies in themselves and FE seeks to be warm, inviting, and keep morale high. Uh, TI will tell the truth at the cost of feelings, and FE will be kind at the cost of full truth. So you can see how these um, are opposites. Once again, if you have one, you have the other. Um, so what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to get into how these will appear for the different personality types. And if you have one part of the axis, it may act like a strength. The other part of the axis may act like a weakness for you. Um, so in the next video, we're going to get into like which functions does each personality have? How can you develop them? You know, how does this relate to Myers-Briggs? This doesn't look anything like the four-letter dichotomy INFJ or whatever that I saw before. How does, like, Carl Jung and all these cognitive functions relate to Myers-Briggs? So 
That's what we're going to get into in the next video. I hope to see you on the next one.